Hi, Alison. Thanks for being with us today. So you Thank you. Thanks so much for inviting me. My pleasure. You've been working with artists since 2002, helping them to grow their art businesses. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and about what you do? So, yes, I've been working with them in my business at Art Biz Success since 2002. Before that, I worked with artists in art museums as a curator and an educator. So technically almost three decades working with artists. Um, yeah, so what I do is I help, I give artists the skills and support that they need to build a career and or a business because those aren't necessarily the same thing. Um, so Great. yeah, and I do that through classes, workshops, my book, um, but it all started out with the free content that I provide, which is usually how people first are introduced to me through the blog and the podcast. I think I heard about you first because somebody was teaching a course based on your book and I thought, oh, that sounds interesting. So I've had I'd Rather Be in the Studio, your excellent book, for years now. And I've just found that you did such a great job in explaining um, just all the aspects of building an art business. So I'm so glad to hear that you've reprinted the book, right? I have. I have put a copy right here, which I always, almost always forget. Um, I did, it went back into print this year. It was an ebook only for a while, and it went back into print this year. Um, we're talking in 2019. So, uh, yeah, and I don't know how much longer it will be in print. Okay. But yeah, it is. Well, I um, can. And how interesting that someone was teaching a course based on my book. I didn't know that. Yeah, I think it was some time ago in a TAFE college somewhere here in Australia. I don't even know. Oh, where. okay. I do know that that has happened. Yes. And, and it has been a textbook in a number of places. I used to send boxes of them all over. Um, mm, I, I can say why, because I found that I, I stuck up the table of contents on my wall to remind myself which section I was looking at, depending on what I was working on and it was such a great guide and you really encouraged me that building a business um, as an artist is worthy of your creativity and that we can bring our creative skills to that. I'm glad that you recognize that because uh, what I do, my, I have a good friend and she calls me the Martha Stewart of artist careers um, because I can teach like the best, the prettiest packages, to wrap yourself up in and yet I also want to recognize that you can ignore any of my advice and still be totally fine when you have that confidence and uh, can kind of forge your own path so I always encourage artists to you know forge their own paths and and use their creativity in their business as much as they do in their art right and it seems like imposter syndrome is really common and once you kind of recognize that that really kind of helps in moving on and finding your way can you talk to us a little bit about imposter syndrome and why we don't need to feel like we're the only ones right well almost every <laughs> almost every business book i pick up talks about imposter syndrome so it's not an artist thing it happens when you put yourself out there when you mm -hmm when you take risks, it will always happen. Um, what I believe, and Lord knows it's happened to me too, what I, it still happens. I believe that, this is gonna be controversial, but I'm gonna say it anyway. For some artists, it's real because they try to start marketing their work too early. They're still under the influence of a teacher. They're still, you know, they don't have the foundation in place to build a strong business on. And it's so easy these days to make something and try to sell it right away. And yet, when you enter the marketplace, you're, you aren't necessarily comparing yourself to others, but everyone else might be, right? Everyone else has that 
knowledge or that access to compare you to other people. And so I think it happens when you haven't, when you haven't paid your dues, when you haven't done your, um, you know, you haven't done the exhibitions, you haven't, you've tried to shortcut, you've tried to take shortcuts. And I think that's when it's really dangerous and probably well-founded to have imposter syndrome. If you've paid your dues, if you've done all the work, um, and then you build confidence with every little success, right? Every little success gives you confidence and um, helps you become more confident. And, and that just breeds more and more success. So you have to, yeah, you know, I don't know if that's the answer you are looking for, but I, I can't tell every artist that they should have all the confidence and co because they're super competent because you really can't, anyone can make something and try to sell it, but you. Exactly. To. Yeah. And I, I believe that our confidence comes from building skills from learning the basics, both in our art making and then in our business sharing, doing that in a professional way. And, it really is a journey, isn't it? There's a lot of moving parts to becoming a competent artist. There's a lot of moving parts to sharing that work with the world. Um, yeah, I found your book a good companion, working through the things I needed to learn and, and just taking it step by step because it does take time to do it right um, on both sides. Absolutely. And um, building skills um, is very different from buying a book or signing up for a class. You really have to do the work. You have to do the work, apply it, test it, live it. It doesn't happen overnight. It, ha it takes at least three years of consistent dedication to the process in order to see movement. And you're gonna see hopefully movement before then, but it, it can't be here and there maybe, you know, how I'm halfway in, mm. it has to be all in for a certain amount of time. That's right. And it's helpful to, to have some help to know which pieces to put in place in the right order and just take it, take it steady, take it yep. with the confidence that you'll get there, even if you're not there yet, if you, you know, put in the work yes. and move ahead. So I know that um, in sharing your story, as you're moving along that journey, but an email list is really important. Can you talk a little bit about why that's a good piece to have in place um, as you're growing through the journey and learning to share your work with the world? Why does an email list matter? Okay, so this comes from my background working in the United States Senate, actually, and, and my work in the museums, because in the Senate, we recognize that the senator's list of donors was his most important asset. I mean, that thing was treated like gold as it should have been. It would have been the, the first thing we would have grabbed because it was all on index cards at that time. It would have been the first thing we grabbed when we walked out of, you know, of a fire. That would have been it. Um, in the museum, it's the, it's your membership list. It's your patron list. It's, you know, the people that give for your exhibitions. Those are critical. So I kind of knew immediately that the list, my list was the most important asset that I was going to have. Nobody had to tell me that. And, and people actually went through a phase where they were focused on blog subscribers and not email list subscribers. And I think regretted it. But um, why it's most important is that those people who trust you with their email addresses, who have said, I want to hear from you again are, I mean, gosh, just saying that should spell it all out. But basically it's like, these people trusted you. They said, I want to hear from you. And nobody else has that same list. So artists, we also went through a phase a number of years ago where people are trying to buy email lists. Um, thankfully, I don't see that happening much, but they wanted, they were buying email lists or even snail mail lists. And it doesn't do you any good to have somebody else's list. It is gold, that list of people that have 
bought from you, showed up for your openings, asked to hear from you. It's just like, like it's just, should, first of all, it should blow your mind that people care about your art that much. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I feel the same way from my list every day. It blows my mind. Like these people really want to hear from me. I want to give them something good. I want to honor that. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's why it, it's just, it's just so critical to use that. I mean, it doesn't do you any good to have it if you don't use it. I'll just say that. Um, yeah, you you're learning to build touch. that relationship. You've got to keep in touch with those people and to, um, to nurture that relationship, to keep them warm, to give them something before you ask for something right? So some people only use their email list when they want something. Show up at my opening, buy from my sale, see my new... When you, when you have that trust with your list, you want to give them love and attention before you ask them for something. Yeah, and that's such an important part, isn't it? To know yourself as an artist and what you bring and what it is that's important to your audience. And when you're, as you said before, paying your dues, I think you have to be really careful that you're listening to the right people. Because if you're following advice from someone whose audience is completely different than yours and whose artistic style is completely different than yours, you're going to be trying to tick boxes that don't apply to your style or your audience or your niche or the people who are going to say, oh, I love what you do. And that, that's really who we're looking for, right? Right. I'm really glad that you said that. And that's why qual quality of the list is so much more important than quantity. We scrub our list constantly because we only want to be sending to people that are opening and engaged with us. Um, the other thing that's related to what you said, and I'm not sure if you meant it this way, but a, a lot of times artists follow advice or follow advice from people who have service-based businesses, right? So people like me, although I'm writing for artists, so I'm a little different, but I have a service-based business, but people who teach marketing lessons to non-artists, so they're selling service products instead of art. Those are very different, uh, very different uh, markets. And you, they're, like you said, you should approach them differently. Exactly. Understand them differently. Yeah. 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 It's, it's just so important to know yourself and know who you're talking to and then find the tools that will help you in that. Yeah. Journey. And yeah. know who to, like you said, know who to listen to also. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So good. So can you, can you share with us any inspiring stories of artists that you've helped and how, um, you know, I'm sure you have a lot with. <laughs> I'm looking artists. at, I have this wall of note of note cards. Um, are we recording this on video? Yeah. Yeah. So I have this wall of, um, I call it my wall of love. Um, oh, look at that. that are, they're almost all handmade cards and hand painted. They're beautiful from artists um, expressing their gratitude. And it means so much to me. I think when, yeah, I want to give one story because I just saw it in my inbox. An artist who came to a three-day event that I had a couple years ago. And she said, at the event, somehow it came out that she had this line of products, prints, note cards, calendars, whatever they were. And we go through, I go through this exercise with my clients in a class that I teach called the Art Biz Accelerator. It's called the Income Accelerator. And basically my point is, my point with her at the time was, you can sell all these small products and you can sell a hundred of them and do the same amount of marketing that you would for one sale of an original piece of art. And she came back just recently. Oh, I'm pulling up her email because I wasn't, because I'm not prepared um, <laughs> to talk to you, but I wanted to tell you what she said because 
she said, um, since I have focused on more on my paintings, I sold $15,000 more worth of artwork this year. $15,000 more dollars worth of artwork. And she was written up in the Wall Street Journal at the same time. So she kind of, she let go because it, when you, you, when you sell the smaller stuff and I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but it takes just as much effort to sell a print as it does to sell an original painting. So I have my students and clients do the math in the income accelerator. Yeah, so if you wanna make this much, how many originals or how many reproductions and small items would you have to sell? So. It really I clarifies. Love, <laughs> yeah. I love that story and I love that, um, that it's working for her. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing it. So, yeah. so good. So where can we connect with you, Alison? You can connect with me um, on Instagram at Alison Stanfield. It's A-L-Y-S-O-N Stanfield. And you can connect with me on my Facebook business page at Art Biz Success and at artbizsuccess.com. And where's I'd Rather Be in the Studio available from your book? So you go to artbizsuccess.com and it gives you options for purchasing it there. And, um, and I do know that I've had clients in Australia purchase it. It has not been easy to get it on international sites, but I do know that at least one client in Australia got yeah. it online. It's probably one of my students. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I hope so. And, and I also um, suggest that... Um, I always suggest that people enter through free things like, you know, my podcast or which is on my blog um, or it's on my podcast page at artbizsuccess.com and the, um, and the blog and, you know, I frequently do free webinars and so forth. And the book is a nice thing, reference tool to have. Um, yeah. We really ready to go in depth, really ready to build that foundation. Check out our classes that we have online. Well, thank you, Alison. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. It's been lovely to speak with you. Um, I've enjoyed your book and your input so much. And what, one of the things that sticks in my mind that you said was, um, it might've been in your podcast, but you said, don't just uh, have an item on your to-do list break it down into steps and that way you're going to get through it. That has really stuck with me along with lots of other pieces, but thank you okay. for everything you do for artists and for sharing with us at the Confident Artist today. I am so blessed. Thank you for inviting me. Bye everyone. <laughs> Bye. -bye.